Welcome back to Dare to Call Him Friend. And today, I'm keeping it real. In high school, I belonged to the drama club and it was so fun being part of a team. I was never a great actress, I'm never going to say that, but I loved to learn the tricks of the trade and I loved being around people who were excellent in their craft. There were people in my drama club who actually went on to become professional actors and playwrights and they did extremely well in their lives. And I could tell even in high school that these guys were going places. I loved learning about the subtlety of a good actor, the body language that they use, the inflection they use in their speech to create an atmosphere where allow their audience to be drawn into what is happening right then to the point that they forget that somebody is acting. They actually think that person is that role. If it's only for a couple of hours, that is a sign of a good actor. In Jesus' time, there was stage entertainment as well. They had stage actors and the Greeks were famous for their acting and they had a certain name. And you know what those stage actors were called? They were called hypocrites. Yep. You got it. That's where we get the word. Uh, hypocrite back then was an actor. And back then in the Greek mythology type of acting, they used masks all the time. They would use masks to play certain gods or to emote certain emotions. So when Jesus accused people of being hypocrites, everybody knew what he was talking about. Now, a lot of people e equate the word hypocrite back in Jesus' day with all Pharisees. No, there were actually some really good Pharisees, but they were caught up in this religious system. Some of them in that religious machine actually were secret followers of Christ and tried to do their best to help him at certain points in his ministry. They were just doing what they were trained to do. From a very young age, they were trained to wear robes in a certain way, to act in a certain way, to uh, do all these different rituals in the temple in a certain way. And very much so, it was like an actor. It was a role that they played. They would walk down the roads of Jerusalem and in those roads people would see them and automatically assume if they are a Pharisee, then they must be an upright person. But God knew their heart. Jesus could see through their facade as well. He could probably see those broken areas in their lives are those areas where they were not confident in that they were trying to hide from the rest of the world by putting on more and more religious practices, not just on themselves, but on those around them, just hoping nobody stepped behind the curtain to see who was really there. Hypocrite is quite often associated in the media and entertainment with the word Christian. And it's just the way our society is. And I have a feeling that social media and entertainment is going to continue to press against us. Unfortunately, there are some who have been in the spotlight, who were exposed, who failed miserably, and the word hypocrite truly did belong to them. They were so busy trying to hide behind their religious speech. Their insecurities led them further and further into sin until their sin finally tripped them up. And those walls, those fake fronts just went tumbling down. And not only did their reputation get a hit, but all of Christianity did as well. Sometimes we can think, I can get away with stuff because, you know, I'm not in the spotlight. So people really don't see what's really going on. Do you think that's really true? I don't think so. The Lord convicted me about that when I was preparing to do this. And I was thinking 
of times when in my past, for example, I'm at church and uh, three or four seats away from me, there's somebody chewing their gum so loud that it's actually can be heard over the worship music going on. And I had, would have my eyes shut and I'd have one hand up in the air, my head tilted just the right way. And anybody passing by would think, oh, she's deep in worship. When all the time in my head, I'm screaming, get rid of that gum. You get the idea. Here's another example. You'd like the world to know that you are an introvert, but you just feel awkward in social settings an awful lot. An introvert is somebody who, when they're away from crowds, they kind of recharge themselves. An extrovert is somebody who goes somewhere and by the time the meeting is over, they're all charged up and they really don't want to go home yet. I think some people who have social anxiety hide behind the mask of an introvert. Let's say you're in a prayer meeting and you go there all the time and God has put something in your heart to add to the prayers that have already been prayed by others, but you don't speak those prayers out loud because you're afraid that they won't come out in the easy flow that it comes out in your pastor or maybe your head intercessor or whatever. Well, here is a quote just for you. And it was written by a guy about 400 years ago. His name is William Journal or Gurnall. I'm not sure which, but he says it this way. And I'm going to add my own little twist to it as we go along. Sometimes perhaps you hear another pray with much freedom and fluency while you can hardly get out a few words. And so you are ready to accuse yourself, loser, and admire him. Oh my goodness, how that guy can pray. Nobody else needs to pray because he prays so fluently. God immediately answers his prayer. Think of it this way. If the gilding of a key makes it open a door better than the exact same key without the gilding, there's a problem there. It's not the gilding that counts, it's the key. And the key is prayer, and the other key is humility, and the other key is obedience.